Can someone tell me why it's good to have it? When do we do Angry Baby? Do we just do Angry Baby all the time? Like, what is, like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> tell me more, if you, if you will. Well, you said when. What else about Angry Baby do you not understand? When Angry Baby, what do you, what do you mean? You I'm asked about newbie. when. I have no idea but... what it is. Okay. On the so side, I didn't it? want to say okay. anything nice. So what is Angry oh, Baby and when to do Angry Baby? What other questions? That's all you're going to give what us? What is it though? Like, <laughs> what is Angry Baby? Like, I don't understand it. Laura, thank you. Because, yeah. How do we oh, start with this baby, question? Mate. There's Drywall Baby too. Oh man, you're confusing me now. Oh, that's chip rock, man. <laughs> it's sort Drywall of this underlying theme of Chantal and Ellie and whatnot. So when you get childhood abuse, your angry baby gets internalized. So the self-criticism that she was talking about, that's corrections toward yourself. Self-blame, toxic shame. So you get into a loop of owning all the problems. So angry baby becomes inverted or toxic shame. So then you don't have a voice to protect yourself and say, I matter as an adult. So that's when angry baby should come out. I call it... Uh, your inner rebel. So it's also part of counter will. So if you have counter will and then you have your inner rebel, there's a part of you that stands up for shit and says, fuck it. <laughs> so there's sad baby and angry baby. A lot of codependents have issues with, with sad baby. That's why they're seeking connection. And that's why they fall for sadness and pity, please, because unintegrated sad baby. And then the flip side is angry baby, which wants to uh, break stuff, test boundaries, push against things. And yet drywall baby is a little more complicated. Crack baby. That sort of. I am safe back here. I am safe back here. I am safe back here. Haha. -ha. The joke is on you because you hide you don't need your me. true self. You ate the decoy. I am safe In the back, back of a cave. Haha. -ha. So that's the crack joke is baby. on you because you didn't eat me. You ate the decoy. But when you hide I your I'm safe back sad here. baby uh -huh. or angry baby. The joke is on you because authentic self. Shrunken, invisible, hidden. You shrink authentic it. self. Shrunken, invisible, hidden. Authentic self. Shrunken, invisible, hidden. And put it in the back self. of a cave. Shrunken, invisible, hidden. Authentic self. Exiled forever. Then your super ego takes over and you lose touch with your angry baby, sad baby. Crack baby. And drywall baby is something else. And there's cinder block baby, but that's <laughs> just to add on. <laughs> so you can't really activate angry baby if you're still in a shared fantasy, right? Uh, you just need, someone needs to poke you to get your angry baby to wake up and scream. You just yeah, need I the right trigger. I yeah, I think angry baby comes out in reactive abuse. I mean, that you yeah. know, it's, it, if you're if you're so busy hiding it and not owning your 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 needs, angry baby will come out when you're pushed and you can't let it. You you can't resist letting it out. Like it 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 it's the one that comes out and is like, Mah! you know, it, when you really freak out and you really demand to be seen. And you're you know overreacting to whatever situation. Yeah, I agree with that. It starts with that counter will. If you hit the counter will first, and then someone pushes extra, then you blow up. Yeah. Someone has to push hard enough. So if there's still space left, 
or it, it needs to be something that's important for you. For me, it's like uh, when it goes about my kids, don't touch my children because I will get out. So right, yeah. and, I, and ideally, it's not a baby at all. Ideally, you own it, and you can just say it before it becomes a baby throwing a temp temper tantrum. You can just say what the issue is, but the baby comes out because it's we won't let it out. We won't own it. We won't own the situation. I guess I'm confused about angry baby then. Because I don't like exploding like a temper tantrum. I just have my collected evidence. And when angry baby comes out, I'm like, you want to see your pattern? And I'll like, you know, pull it out and say, you know, look at exhibits A through, you know, F. It's right here. Well, just because it's controlled doesn't mean it's not stomping your foot. It's still no, a temper tantrum. Yeah, and it's called anger. I know that one. I know what I, I call it my lawyer side. She's icy cold and she kills you just. But is it cold when it's the truth? Yeah. And it's cold. It's, it's back to Ellie's. It's back to Ellie's quote. It's the tone. <laughs> you just did the tone like well let me tell you let me give me the proof it's the tone it if you just said here's the proof here's the evidence and you didn't weren't emotionally involved and you could just stick stick with your limits then it wouldn't be angry baby yeah and there's, there's <laughs> also stick with your limits. and in the tone is disgust and contempt that's what's driving uh cold anger but um, uh, okay. Well, there's um, there's a, a difference between saying no and saying no, and and you know the the simple no is the not engage, not even having an angry baby. It's owning your limits, your your boundaries, your your the 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 line that you draw. And then there's the next level up is that cold like. No, for the following reasons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then above that is, no, God damn it, fuck you. <laughs> so, you know, there's all kinds of different levels, but, but you know, but basically if we were able to just say no and, and be like, and, and someone says, yes, yes, and we just like, fuck you, walk away, and you know, just not, not get involved, um, that would be great. <laughs> I can do that with, I can do that when it's not a romantic relationship or a family member. Like yes, a and that's or here, a yes. friend or whatever, whatever. I don't care. You know, I'll just be. It is not emotional charge. Because you aren't putting yeah. your needs out. The babies come up when your core needs are being exposed to someone to reciprocate but you can get the babies intimacy. mixed up you can get the babies mixed up i can get sad baby mixed up with angry baby yeah me too i i mean mine's always angry baby even when you i only have sad. one baby i know so, i'm not like just angry all the time like one's like i have sad angry baby or hurt angry baby and then angry angry baby <laughs> yeah, so you have one you have one but but behind angry baby is You mean sad? Is angry baby is angry baby protecting sad baby? Is that what's going on? Yes. Bingo. Did the Turner stay at the best? Was that like what uh, was that? Something second hand emotion. You touch you touch the, the feeling just for a second and then bang off you go again. You, touch, <laughs> you just touched it. You just got it and then she had a joke so to make. She had to, she had had to it. soften it. I had to get rid of it. I was thinking about it. And then it's out the window. Can you just, go, just yeah, open the window, grab it back, pull it it's back in? It's all part of the fun of that arrested development where we keep our emotions with the babies. <laughs> Guilty is charged. We've also been rewarded for our tantrums. You know, we, we win. We win arguments by having tantrums, by... By having, you know, whether they're cold tantrums of, of here's 
the 67 points of why you're wrong or whatever it is, you know, the, these tantrums that we throw, we're re rewarded. We're, we're trained that like, oh, it worked. I, sh I should do that again. <laughs> yes, we are. And I think personally rewarded and for me, it helps me become more creative and motivated. I learned how to, de to develop blockchain because I wanted to prove a point that is connected, you know, and here's your chain, you know, of proof that this was connected to that. And you can't argue with the blockchain. But like, it's like, like messed up because it's not like something I necessarily wanted to do for myself. It was to prove a point. Right, know? right, right. You, you took that energy and funneled it over here and it didn't ultimately do anything for you, but it was great OCD. I mean, it helped, it, it helped <laughs> with my career. It, you know? is, the main thing is you were right. <laughs> but unfortunately, it hasn't. If I could give you my own example, I have a client who's notoriously a bad payer. And then the little thing above Dave's shoulder, instead of going into angry baby, I go into sad baby. I get, I get um, what's the word? um sad and vul I get sad and vulnerable instead of getting angry so angry baby needs to come out and say if you don't fucking pay me the party's over in a nice way <laughs> so I get the babies mixed up a little bit professionalism right um it's unprofessional to not pay your bills on time but it's equally I need to somehow I need to not be a child about it and realize that if I'm not being paid, then there's no point doing any work. But is that sad or angry? Well, I'm actually more angry than I am sad. So they're going to get some anger, <laughs> but it's going to be tempted. It's a good lesson. But I didn't invent blockchain. <laughs> and it's also good for the connection because if you go and do that cold state you're sure you're blowing up the connection so the other That's one gets exactly punished right. on that one also so you get you you're right and the other one gets extra punishment because he's losing connection because you're in control of the connection because you're withdrawing yeah so you I so use that so that's why i know it. Yeah get the need met and maintain the connection. However, the maintaining of the connection, if it disconnects, will not be on my head, it will be theirs. It's like, we have an agreement, you need to pay me, here are the terms. Oh, well, you can go and get fucked. Okay, well, that's your choice, but we still have this. That's where I've landed. And, and I would argue that's not necessarily the baby at all. That's owning the situation to just say, we have an agreement, this is this is how it is but the baby comes out and ruins the situation and blows it up stomping the, the foot and making and, and and tearing down the bridge yeah but if the yeah and if the bridge disappears then that's their doing but i'm sticking to my thing but you can slip you can see you can slip into angry sad baby quite easily you can go into sad baby oh my god they haven't paid me it's, that's not what's going on well, I appreciate Kurt's input about like, it's not this out of control thing. It's generally in control. It's just that it feels out of control because we're not used to um, activating that level of like self-protectiveness, self-advocacy kind of thing. So it's just gonna, it's, it's, it's a good metaphor for like, when you feel like it's crazy, maybe it's not if you're protecting yourself, like if so, yeah yeah that that was because i've been yeah i've been thinking about it all week like where when do i need to and i don't have an intimate relationship right now it's pretty easy i'm not even really looking for one so you know and i and i you know I've, it's been a year and a half now since i've had to deal with like oh, yeah um i just am relishing the peace that i have but i i also want to move forward and a lot of you know, what Chantel was speaking to was like, like, how do we take these like really strange, like things that we find about ourselves and like move forward in our, our adult lives, you know, like, 
you know, yeah, I don't know. You start by going so. backwards. Okay, so <laughs> this is an argument. I think it's two angry babies from better things, mother and a daughter. So are you ever going to say something about what? Oh my God, nothing. Are you ever going to say something about what? Oh, about my dad leaving. What? Hear the tone? Yeah, I didn't think so. Max, you had a party. No, it wasn't a party in any way you left. I had to work. God, you don't have to work, Mom. What? How do you think we ever have anything? You work because you want to be famous. <clears throat> Dad told me you have tons of money and savings and he is living like shit. This is so unfair that I think I'm going to pass out. Oh my God. Yeah, Mom, you're the victim. Everything is unfair. <sighs> Max, I oh. try like hell Intensity. to be fair to your father and not put you in the middle. I'm human, but I do try that. But you're 16 now, and that's old enough to know how unfair it is what you just said to me. You know, it really disgusts me how you will sometimes say anything to avoid responsibility for your mistakes. You had a party and you wrecked the house. You're not the first kid to do that. It's not the end of the world. Then why are you acting like it is? So sad, because baby. you make me get this mad before Angry. you even look up from your phone. And you act like your shit don't stink and you shouldn't answer for anything. But you know what, baby? Your shit does stink. And your father lives better than I do. And I'm paying for all of it. Sad, baby. Maybe. <laughs> you want to see the C word fight? <laughs> That's more angry. Ang angry versus angry. But it, it resolves better than this fight. Okay. Bloated. I'm sorry that you feel bad, but you have to learn to rein this shit in, okay? I never took my period out on anybody the way that you do. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. Maybe I should just go, like, lay down in my trailer, right? What? This is actual work, Mom. I have to be on my feet all night. It's not like some movie set. Max, I know you're a little stressed out, and this is your first job, but that doesn't mean you get to be super shitty to me whenever you want. Mom, I'm not being super Wanderers. shitty. You're so dramatic. I can't believe I still have to put up with this bullshit. <laughs> you realize you live here rent-free, right? You do realize that. Oh, you want me to go? I'll go. I am fucking gone. Good. The second I save up some money. You have a paycheck. What's stopping you? You think I won't? Goodbye. Good. Your dirty dress is in the laundry room. Dad said I can live with him whenever I want. Oh, that old chestnut. Perfect. That's great. Go. <laughs> go. Great. 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 You know what would be great, Max? If you helped me. It would be great if you helped me. If you cleaned up after yourself, that would be great. If you helped me with your sisters, that would be great. Kids aren't supposed to help their mom. Their mom is supposed to help them. Oh, is that the law? I didn't realize that I was breaking, like, the mommy law. Yeah, and great job you're doing, by the way, mom. You know, Frankie basically does whatever the fuck she wants, and, and I'm probably going to be fired now, so. Oh, yeah. I'm bad. That's bad. I'm a bad mom. Ownership. No, That's you're good. a disaster, Mom. And you don't always have to be so hard. Just because you don't know what it's like to be a woman anymore. <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> what? You're a cunt, Max. After party. I'm a cunt. Yep. You're a cunt. You're a cunt. No, Max. You're a cunt. No, you're a cunt, Mom. No. 
You're a cunt, Max. No, you're a fucking cunt, Mom. You're a fucking cunt, Max. No, you're a fucking cunt, Mom. You're a fucking cunt, Max. You're a big fucking cunt, Mom. You're a big fucking cunt. Your sister's an asshole, and your other sister's great. <laughs> the sisters are hearing this. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I am a cunt. No, I'm a cunt. <laughs> no, you're not. You're the best. And I am such a cunt. Well. <laughs> Oof. My Uncle Sid called me a cunt. I was nine. Uncle Sid? He's dead now. Fuck you, Uncle Sid! Oh. I love you. Yeah, I love you. I don't want you to move out. But I do. <laughs> so you shouldn't. But please move out soon. But don't. <laughs> oh, wow. Wood. Just realized you're gonna have to go through this Empathy. three times. Oh, Jesus Christ. Angry baby. Was that triggering? It's Very just a video. much so. <laughs> <laughs> it was triggering in that I I could see how my ex would attack our children that way, but it was very very much a lighter version with less manipulation so um this 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 re resolved in a way that could never resolve with my ex my ex would have found a way to force when? capitulation yeah yeah power play not connection yeah, absolutely and I, my... I, I couldn't keep up i was confused as hell that whole scene the like they were part? fighting <laughs> no, the whole thing. Like, they were fighting. <laughs> it was just words, constant. Um, I could pick yeah. up that they were angry with each other. Yeah. They started calling each other the C word. Yeah. And then they escalated. And then it they off. found common ground. And then they... I was confused. I had no idea the whole way. Like, it was... Is it is um, it uh, too much too much estrogen too 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 quick a talking too too many words or is it uh, in American accents or or what? I don't want to be perceived as showing toxic masculinity. Ah, fuck that shit. Just just. I have party. no idea what was going on. Um, There's just a lot of words. I was confused as hell the whole way. That's okay. I could pick up that they were angry and then yeah yeah escalated. But yeah, Kurt. To answer your question, yeah. Uh, we have a whole room full of people that can help explain it to you. Maybe some other people were able to understand. My mother really. seems to have a kitsch of borderline. I, you know, and so if we put that into context, if the mother being kind of borderline, then maybe she's like pushing and pulling her kid, pushing and pulling her kid kind of thing um and it's aggravating and i yeah i could see yeah that, that's the thing i thought of but it wasn't a realistic borderline portrayal because <laughs> they wouldn't capitulate at the end right, you're right right exactly no this is like yeah. disney channel version no they'd be slitting their wrists like they'd this. be you know shooting something up you know <laughs> by oh. the end of the ball <laughs> in in my household if i called out my mother Oh my God, my father would storm into the room and literally yep. fucking smack me into last week. They would call, they would call a psych ward on me and I would be inpatient treatment. 
I'm not even kidding you. Because I yeah, was. I, I would. I, I would the, wish for that treatment. Yeah. No, not when they diagnose you with the shit your parents have, you know, and then you're doped up for you know the next four or five uh, years while no, your I mother you're triggered with the re the reality of your flashback. I understand. That while your mother sits for the next four or five years with a psychiatrist, so you're doped up on all these crazy ass drugs, fucking with your mind for your entire teenage years. You know, you because see they the don't extra wanna... tone you have, Lori? That's your anger. Yes, baby. I'm mad. See? That's so my not angry, angry baby. baby. Yeah. It's not all intellectual and flat. There's some extra energy fire. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> I like it. Bring it on, Lori. down in the mud with us i would fuck him up if i could if, if i was a if i was a Wait, violent that's anger person, baby that's rebel yeah if i was fuck a violent up. person i would fuck him up but i have never hit anybody in my life and i'm not going to hit anybody in my life because ah, come on I'm try it out it's fun i'll punch a punching bag no you have to use anything <laughs> Not um, in real time, but explaining it and in your fantasy, that's really fantasy, good for your soul. In my fantasy, it's like Salem witch trials with my family, all of them. Or like an inverted cross and then just stick them on them, you know? <laughs> I'm, I don't know. <laughs> it has to be inverted, you know? We'll go like black metal style music video on them, mm. you know? Like, no. They should have never been parents. Eight years ago, before I was in my marriage with the narcissist, I got to a place to find myself. Like I found my inner voice and I felt like driven by more than just anger and I could cry and like I could connect. But then now, I, you know, it's like a double down. Like, you know, you tell a narcissist the trauma you've been through and they open all those wounds. They open them all back up. And I, you know, I mean, said some of the worst part of it, you know, I just don't even want to reprocess that with on top of that, all the crap that my husband put me through. And I'm pissed at myself because I was a dumbass back when I was 24, thinking that I had actually processed all the crap that I didn't actually process, which made me susceptible to a, a relationship with the narcissist to begin with. So it's just dumb, you know? So your wounds were used against you by the narcissist. And then they add oh, yeah. an extra abuse on top. Oh yeah. In, mm -hmm. Any vulnerability, when he was love bombing me, his strategy was to ask me things, you know, and like be caring and like be that whatever and then when it went into the devaluation all these little subtle things that he'd say that would trigger you know a wound of like the reason why i like to run away you know or like it would come up in a well you're feeling bad you want to go travel somewhere and you know it started <laughs> very subtle like that yeah you know and that's how it really started that's a pretty good side job yeah that extra tone, yeah. making fun of your tendency to run away, or yeah, to... did he pathologize you? Like, kind of trying to find like what was wrong with you all the time and your diagnoses, and focus on no, no, because I was very open and honest about my diagnoses. Because after I got out of my family situation. I took, I, I, I like stopped going to counselors and I did, I stopped all the medicine and I was like sick for like three or four months after going, get, finally getting off that crap that my mother made me shove down my throat. And then I took like a year off of like all that kind of stuff. But I sat in my feelings and I told myself, it's not logical to be afraid of everybody in mental health because of the crap that my family put me through. And I know I have issues. So I need to force myself to go back in 
And so I met with like three or four different ones because some of them, I mean, they're not all great, you know? And so, and then I found one that, that seemed to really help. And then I went through that. And so by the time I met my husband, like I felt pretty aware of like my own patterns and character defects and that kind of stuff. So I was just upfront about it, but you know what he did? He would put in little things in my head. Do you think maybe your PTSD may be out of control? And I had like a three year insecurity questioning if I was out of control with my own PTSD until I woke up one day and realized I'm not having PTSD issues with anybody but you. So that didn't make any sense, you know, but he, he would use that against me to make me question myself. Was, mm -mm. I think my ex and your uh, your ex went to the same school, yeah. <laughs> um, I worked out my dramas. I knew something was off when uh, I was at work, and I'm dealing with pretty uh, intense situations, having to communicate um, quite complex uh, tasks. All the boxes got to get ticked to numerous like staff around me. Uh, supervisors, subordinates, all that, um, peers. Then I go home and she would just be confused as fuck when I just asking something simple. And then I would get that like, um, a, are you triggered from your childhood? This is why, or it, the, the gaslighting, all that sort of stuff. Um, and the better I did at work, I'm going, no one's confused at work when I speak to them, but yet when I come home, this intelligent individual is confused by me. And I started going, logically, something's not right. Um, yeah. So I started pulling back and seeing what it was. Yeah. But it's, it's crazy making. It's bizarre. It's weird. It's... You don't understand it. It's just insane. It's, uh, yeah. Sorry, I think I just hijacked that, uh, Laurie. But, yeah. No, no, they thank you. Thank your... you. Yeah, no, it's, I can relate. And it's, it's hurtful because you open up and you tell them about all your childhood and uh, two alcoholic parents and they got all their issues and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I can relate. Like they, they, your parents prime you and design you to go in as a perfect like um, jigsaw puzzle for this abuse. You are a designed, by design, a victim. Well, not a victim. I hate that title. Sorry, but you're designed to interlock with these people, like to be abused. Because it's all you know. It's it's fucked. It's horrible. It's so funny. Well, they need someone. They need someone to make it work. They have to have a. They have to have someone, be it a, no oh, victim or a, a scapegoat. They have to have a third party to to make the whole thing work. And as soon as that one wears out, they get another one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's and so funny. That that, that was, there's always one round. That you said you hate like saying it's a victim because i feel that way too like yeah i don't i don't victim mentality for me is is toxic it because it... i'm i've been around people who have their genuine grievances and and they have every right to feel like they have they've been a victim but it's just that mentality that goes along with it like i don't see that as the ladder out of the hole that i'm in um, Could it be that's part of the problem? You know what? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. That's why I'm here. Maybe like, that being um, maybe being a victim for a little while might not be such a bad thing. Well, for a victim to be like, I still feel like a victim of my husband. Like, I need to go through that process, but I get stuck on like, um, I'm no longer a victim, but I know logically that because at one point I was a victim, 
I forever have to hold myself accountable not to project the crap that they did to me onto other people. And that's what makes me mad. Because it wasn't my fault somebody abused me. Multiple people abused me. But I have to deal with the baggage so I don't hurt other people or do the same things to other people myself. And that pisses me off. You know, because I, they should have just not been assholes and abusers, you know, but I mean, what's wrong with with being a victim? Because there's too many people that abuse that, you know, and they go around making people feel sorry for them and all this crap. And also I feel like it's, it's like a mentality where it, it like, kind of sets you up to be more dependent on other people and stuff. And I want to be my individual self. I want to find myself. Isn't that what happened to you? Isn't that what happened to you? What do you mean? Well, I mean, we say that we don't like to use that word, but from what you've both described, it's exactly what happened to you. I'm not labeling you. I'm just simply pointing out that we've just put a connotation on a word that maybe it doesn't need. And, maybe understanding what it actually means would help. That's all. I think there, I think <laughs> there's a difference a, between like- Now you're just playing with words right now, I think is the is the meme that Dave's got. But yeah, that's what it sounds like. Cause what I'm hearing is I don't want to be a victim. I'm not a victim. And yet what you're describing is exactly that. Well, I, d- I wish I wasn't a victim, but I know that I have been but I'm not going to allow myself to live in a victim mentality forever. That's, I think, the difference. It works for a lot of people. Does it? Yeah. They get free stuff, lots of attention and codependence running around after them. and Living in a victim mentality, yeah. Yeah, they're not victims. They just live in that world. Oh, well, I'm a victim. Oh, I'm a victim. I see what you're saying. So they you know actually I mean? were never a victim, but they have the mentality. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, fair point. Fair point yeah. for sure. That's the game. My, my ex, my ex plays victim all the time. She's always a victim or a hero. Uh, Heroes and villains. <laughs> Black and white world where things are either good or bad, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm still dealing with the fallout. I mean, it's still ongoing. I, I don't, it's not that I'm being guarded about that. There is reasons why. Like, talk about my childhood, no drama. It's, it's pretty fucked up. But um, she's still playing victim. And, and to look at her and the way she communicates, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, so I just resent that. Um, I don't know. I don't Ooh, know. Resentment, resentment. Because she looks like this um, delicate, blonde, big boobs, innocent, and she comes across so nice, and she presents extremely well. And if you look at me, I've got a mirror at home. Uh, I'm kind of fucked. <laughs> uh, I? Why are you fucked? I look like a thug. No, you just look like a Perth bogan. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, don't. And she uh, doesn't. She looks everyone like everyone looks like Perth looks like this, Frank. <laughs> that defend it descend into self-loathing that's also self-serving that that can get you know kind of victimy too you know to recognize that you're not a you know terrible or wonderful you're just yeah I, you're I'm just no angel, frankly like, yeah <laughs> it, it's just i'm dealing with something that i don't i don't know what to do it, it's confusing as fuck um like, I know what's happened to me is extremely bad, but I don't want to fly the victim card for that that because I think it's just been hijacked and, and that's what she's doing. 
I I don't I don't want to, I don't know what to do. Like I'm trying to process it and trying to put it in boxes on a shelf in my mind and go, yep, that's why that happened. This is why that happened. But I, I got no idea. Hey. I can't find you're a box the victim, but you're, you're the victim, but you're not allowed to be. And she's not the victim, but she is allowed to be. <laughs> she's done a good job on you, mate. <laughs> she's done... That's 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 genius. Wait till uh, mid September. I can talk about it. <laughs> I won the court case though, eight charges. I got found not guilty, but yeah. Oh, you that and Kurt go toe to toe. That <laughs> narrative didn't transfer over to. Um, yeah, not guilty does not mean not guilty. Just mean means shit. it didn't get proven. You're still guilty in the eyes of everyone else. Don't worry about I it. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It's fun. Like this, I, had a, I had a three day court case, and um, the first day there was a crowd at the back of the court all staring at me, like, that's the guy, burn him at the stake. And she got up and gave evidence, and it was really disturbing. Like, the magistrate from looking at me, like, was looking at her going, like, it was really bad. She was lying, and to the second day, the victim was there with her two friends. There's no longer a crowd and I've got a couple of um, uh, associates, we'll call them, friends. Um, and then on the last day of the of the verdict, there was no one there. No one cared. Yeah. Just my two friends. Um, yeah. And but then you, that didn't transfer but, over uh, to... Does it, does it take a, a while there to... Uh get such things expunged taken off your record oh, um i've had to concede in the uh, family courts because i can't pay for yeah yeah i'm i'm still listed as a as a uh, domestic abuser just because i was charged with it it was never it was it was thrown out <laughs> if, if you dig yeah. down in the in the things like details like several clicks down it says it was thrown out but it's listed on the first page, which is on the only where anybody looks, that I was charged with domestic violence. You know, it doesn't it, it yeah. doesn't say, you know, the judge laughed at her and threw it out, which is what yeah. happened. But but you know, I'm a domestic abuser. <laughs> we gotta talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanted like a certificate. Like it went yeah. kind of guilty, like See, and but it doesn't transfer over. Doesn't work that just way. Got away with it. You got to watch more cop shows, man. <laughs> Wait till mid September. <laughs> <laughs> yep. As far as I can um, see it, it's a strange dynamic because, like, you don't want to be a victim, so. You're pushing it away, and the other one is saying, okay, I want to be the victim, so give it to me. Yes, so that's exactly it's right. It's searching someone who's pushing away that they're really a victim because they don't want to be the victim, but they are. And then the other one says, oh, yeah, please give it to me then. There's just like this transference. The, yeah, the real it's, victim. it's almost like, like I'm using a proxy for her to be or him to be the victim that I'm not, that I'm denying myself. That's, I don't think I'll be believed. That's genius. Because yes, then that's... I don't have to work. I don't have to be sad. I don't have to feel the hurt. I don't have to do anything. I can save the other one and then feel good too. I think that's a sick dynamic. Oh, we're not together. That's... I'm going to show you. <laughs> It, yeah, I feel like it doesn't matter if you're together or not. <laughs> no, 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 no. For me, no, no, no. what I'm starting to see, Chantal, is kind of what you're saying. If you allow the space for the narcissist to take that role, oh, they're going to go right for it. And I'm seeing that happening. Well, they're taking it. Hang on. I think what Chantal, I'm on Chantel, team Chantel with this one, right? 
Because yeah, cause, they are not taking it. We are giving it to them. Yeah, exactly. Because if because you won't you own it in your say store. like yeah. okay, yeah, I, I was a victim it. here, or the real victim, not not a victim card because that's that's kind of stupid, fucked up bullshit. But really a victim, I I'm, I'm, I know I'm doing this now. That hurts. That sucks. And I don't like myself like that. But if I'm not doing it, the next one who's coming along, I can push my victim foot into his uh, or her um, boat and she can use it or he can use it. Because I'm not, I'm not owning my own real victimhood and I was I just don't know how to own it like I like I don't talk um that's what I'm famous for like I don't well, I mean I talk now I'm trying to but I was yeah but you don't place. need to talk to feel like, you don't need to talk you have to feel sad baby and that's 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 sucking like That's it, why I'm, I let sad baby out was when I was 15 years old. I tried to kill myself. I almost succeeded. Then my mom made it all about her, threw me into all this crazy nonsense, and I never got to process how upset I was. So I feel like I would have to process all of that again, and it would be in that dark of a place again. And I don't actually want to kill myself anymore, but I think it would lead me to those feelings like that deep. That so I just don't you. want myself to go there. She stole your ability to be a victim from you. Yeah. Like I'll your wife. So your victim. Yeah. Oh, I'll take that. Thank you. Yeah. You can, and you then can she have it. Right? It too. So it's it's from what I'm feeling now, it's it's it hurts and it sucks, but it's not killing me. And what it offers me is that it creates space for me. So I like the space. It's it's highly addictive. Um because it's a space I never got. So now I'm really conquering it again. My space, my, my, my body, um, and it's not that bad. I'm not breaking a part of something or I'm not, um, that was what I thought as a child would happen, but it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not that bad. At least, not up until now. I survived it. Yeah, no. What you described before earlier, that's that's really bad. Yeah. Like you just gave a little bit, I know, but that's a lot. Like yeah. I don't, and, know, I don't know what and to I say. think you um, had it's it's an it's a, we all have other details, but it's all bad. It's it's like Laurie says. My parents and your parents, they shouldn't have have children, but they had. So, and I like, I like the freedom. Like Dave is saying, like if you're reverse engineer and I go back to, to the hell, it's not so bad as I thought it was. And if I do the work, what I get is, is this relief and space and yeah, I would do anything for that because it's it creates freedom. But I dealt with my I think the problem I think is I dealt with my childhood, but yeah, it's just if you don't own the victim part of this, then they do. Yes. And oh, because it's, okay, because it's binary. When you turn up to court, if you're not the victim, she is, and if yeah. she's not the victim, you are. So unfortunately, when you walk into the courtroom and you say, well, I'm not a victim, guess what? And I don't mean to be, that's pretty blunt and cruel, but. No, it's true. You, you show up and say, I'm not the victim. That, then they look at you like, oh, so yeah. you're admitting your guilt. And yeah. that's, yeah. that's why. And so, yeah, that's why I would argue maybe a week of wallowing around being a victim and feeling how horrible that actually is might not necessarily be such a bad idea and get free stuff. I know, it's, it's repulsive, Frank. I, I know, know. It's, I know. It's a temporary it's space. It's a temporary space that has utility in changing your perception. Yeah, it, it's revolting, Frank, but you might have to do it. 
there's a lot of shame though in, in accepting gone. that. A lot of shame in what? A lot of shame in accepting that, okay, I'm not going to play the victim card and I'm not owning it. So now I'm going to try and own it, kind of bring it a little closer. And then, you know, it's been brought up like three times tonight, the stupidity that's felt. It's like, oh my God, you know, and. That's shame. That's the shame that you feel. So what you're saying is I have to feel the, the victim so I can feel the shame. And I don't want to feel either of those things. So I'm not, I'm just going to disown all of it because underneath the victim thing is shame. Right. And the shame is how the fuck did I get in with, into bed with this lunatic in the first place? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, I'll give you that. So big victim time for you, mate. <laughs> I'm but a it, victim. It's, it's, it's also, easy to jump on the cross, up you go and away and make it happen. But I don't talk as well. Like I don't. I don't want to talk about it because I'm learning that word is injunction. The way I was raised, you don't talk. Um, like you don't talk. Uh, and we don't, I don't talk about feelings. If I did, people would believe me. It's yeah. We don't talk about it's, feelings. Aussie blokes don't do that. Well, if I talk in my native tongue, you might not believe what I was actually born. <laughs> but my accent is the best. You, you're a Glaswegian I'm like actually, Yes, that's right. <laughs> Raised by two fantastic parents. It was great. Yeah. I've got, and the other side of my family is from Limerick. So I got called a, um, what is it? A violent drunk with a great sense of humour. <laughs> I gave it up. But, but. The, the thing is that that culture doesn't play victim and they don't have any feelings. They just eat and, I mean, that's what Granon talks about. They just eat and drink themselves to death. So might, this one might be tough. This one might not be as easy as just go play victim, but, yeah, maybe there's something in there. They're tough. I mean, that part of it, oh, they're bloody tough, right? Braveheart was made for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so i got hurdles i know that and that's why i'm here because uh, like i said i don't want cuddles you know i want i want to be able to process it and put it somewhere properly and i disagree crazy. i disagree you know, I, don't know. I think you do I want know. cuddles i think that's exactly Maybe I do. yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't know i haven't got a clue honestly i'm lost it's I've seen a lot of shit and been through a lot of shit, but this is just overwhelming. This has got me. Like, this has got me. I, this has been about a year and a half with the ex and, I don't know. I can put a lot of stuff in boxes and put it on a shelf easy, but this is just disturbing. It, was this your kryptonite? Hmm. It's, uh, overwhelming and i do feel yeah. like when laurie said she felt dumb about not seeing the red flags or being i don't know you said something that resonated with me and yeah i feel really embarrassed and, and i feel stupid but you know she's still got everyone else fooled around me so i take a compliment in that that she's pretty good at what she does I get a kick when you guys say you are dumb for getting involved with narcissists at 24. I think that's what Laurie said, 24. I get a I was kick. 27. 27. No, yeah. 28, yeah. 26. Yeah. I was 24 when I was getting my good place, and then two years later, I ended mm. up with a narcissist. Well, I did, right. it in my 26. I did it in my 50s. So here we go. And I'm 60, 30 years. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, dumber if you're older, they had more, it's more, they since they have a shorter life, it's a bigger, bigger impact. You have more perspective if you're older. Yeah. That's nice, Deef, because <laughs> I always have the idea that it's too late for me. So, yeah. 
Yeah. I like this reframe. Thank yeah, you. I, I, uh, like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Please put this also in your video on the, yeah, because I, I need to hear this a lot of times. <laughs> it's a marathon. It's not a race, does it? Yeah. But when you see it, like you see that behavior and like you can literally read this turn for like the gaslighting, the half truths, the rewritten history. And you read it and you go, and you look at them and that's how they're conducting themselves. It's, I don't know. It's like the world just, your perspective on the world completely fucking flips. You just go, I didn't understand mental illness. You could be like that and be so successful in life. I just didn't, I was naive. I didn't understand it. It's just a mind fuck that this person is that way. It's like, I'm right-handed, but they are left-handed, but they have to pretend to the world that they're right-handed. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like, that's how their brain is wired. It's very hard to process. It's horrifying. Because you want to just go, wake up. What are you doing? You're destroying so everything around us. why is it horrifying? Because you've said it's horrifying, and you've said there's other words you've used like that, which are very emotionally charged. Why is it horrifying? I loved her. She was my best friend. Um, I trusted her. I don't trust people. And that level that they'll go to, I mean, I, you know, I own my dark side, but I can't go there. Like, See? can't go there. another, it's Why another not? fucking level. It's what? What's so bad? What'd you do? What? Well, well, I didn't do anything really. I just kind of fucking stood there, but um, <laughs> stood there. But that's not what got alleged. <laughs> um, Hang on! No! 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 no come on! You can't. What? What? You, you, what? What's this yarn about your dark side? Well, you have to embrace your um your anger and your your ability for violence look if you deny that then i don't know with with what i do in the world like my work and occupation i won't go into it but i work in like the security area um if you don't embrace it and understand it then you can't control it you know what i mean like you want to overcome a resistance and a force without going too far and hurting someone if you don't need to uh, violence is a part of the world frank. <laughs> so you're, what? Not answering, you're not answering the question frank <laughs> was i doing a word no. salad yeah that was a word salad i'm having a little ranch dressing i don't, I don't want to <laughs> tell you too much because it would then expose me which then would expose her, and then I would ha face real-world consequences. So I'm coming across as guarded because... Very, yeah. I have to be. And, Deef, if you can jump in for one second, just say, look, he <laughs> sent me an email. What? He sent me an email. He's legit. There's, like, a... Yes, I can't talk about it. Documents and yeah, stuff that I... I can't talk about it. Looked at, glanced at. Uh, and I fought long and hard to. I had to concede in the family court, put it that way. In the, does that make sense without me saying it? Oh yeah, look, I mean, I'm not. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting you under interrogation. There's paperwork in place. There's paperwork in place. And I just all don't I'm want saying to be, is, all I'm yeah. saying is, but I, what I'm getting is a bit of a word salad and some highly charged. I'm avoiding emotion. the question. I have to, yeah, yeah I you have are. To and it's okay. And you can say, and probably yeah, it's a, hey, Brad, I don't want to answer that question. Fuck off. It's a completely fine answer. And I'll, and I'll take it as such. And that's fine. Ah, oh, but I don't want to be rude <laughs> like that, man. Why not? No, <laughs> it's an appropriate answer for most things yeah. that Brad says. Yeah, really. it's okay. Brad, just yeah. tell Brad to fuck <laughs> off, Brad. It's okay. I was talking about my childhood, but I don't want to steal the spotlight. So, yeah. All right, talk about that. Uh, <laughs> no, well, I mean, someone else can talk. I, mean, I don't have to steal the spotlight. Why not? Uh, two alcoholic parents, uh, violence, um, lots of violence. 
threats of violence. Um, yeah, I was parentified as a child. Uh, nothing sexual, but I was my mum's partner. Like, I didn't go to school. I'd go shopping with her. Um, my dad, uh, my mum wouldn't hesitate. Just violence. Uh, pretty extreme. Uh, I can tell you different stories and incidents, but it's, it is what it is. It's, uh, I got to an age where I went, well, I always knew it was bullshit, but I got to an age where I would rebel. Like I'd just say, you're an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic. And my sister would defend them. And yeah, I was, uh, the scapegoat. Um, There's a feeling. And I'm going to try and say something funny to fucking do a segue. Good catch. Sucks. What was the hot spot? Scapegoat? You're not going to let me get away, are you? <laughs> um... Very alone. Very, very alone. And you feel like you're the one that's crazy. You feel like you've lost your mind because you can see it. Everyone's too fucking polite to just say it, like relatives or people around. Um, because it's disturbing. Um, and you kind of just got to find out your own way that what your family dynamics are in your home life isn't normal because you say something and everyone around you kind of lights up with their eyes like what the fuck and as a 15 year old at school when i'm talking about a normal incident um you'll find it disturbing and they don't want to deal with it and they go quiet and you just learn not to talk about it and you just fucking deal with it Um, so you're very alone. I don't. But I got a lot of strengths out of it. Oh, the spin. <laughs> Trying to focus on the positive, Steve. The burden of family secrets is very... Oppressive. Is it giant weight? Yeah, but I, I kind of confronted that. Um, I don't know. I've always kind of known that I really confronted it when I was about 27, 28, like really seen it for what it was. Mm. Like they should be parents. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust them. To look after a, uh, a pet mouse. Like uh, yeah, well, yeah. Brandon has that with his abusers. And uh, learning terms about enmeshment, and uh, it's like my mum primed me. To be in these relations, this is my second. I've had two serious ones, and they've both been. Um, I was very lucky to stumble upon that uh, the the context of it, uh, COVID narcissism, because that's what I believe has saved me, like my sanity. Maybe I'm insane. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, I was very lucky. Uh, kind of worked out. I un understood the dynamics, and then. The mom, I discovered my mum has something going on and like a parasite, she's back in wanting me to be that fucking thing in her life again, you know. Um, it's sad. It's just shit and sad. And the, 
it's that disturbing that like as a mother you think you'd want to educate your son at some point say hey look i've took the absolute piss out of you you need to be careful about what i've done to you that the female in your life in the future won't do the same thing but they can't do that because if they were to own it they would be admitting that they're a shit person or so they just wait till that relationship's over, then they try and get their hooks back in. It's it's fucked. I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense. Maybe it's just gibberish, I don't know. There's people nodding. Makes a lot of sense. I'm wondering, uh does your mother allow you to have another woman in her, in your life? Because she's the first woman. Uh, she followed mad. Like, she wouldn't want that. But I, I fucked off out of home as soon as I could. Um, yeah. I joined the army. Well, I was a reserve soldier and I did a bit of full time. Yeah, my work that I got after that, I was, all, I just, I was out of home. From 17, I was pretty much out of home. I'd return for a few weeks or a month, then I'd be back out again. Um, 19 years of age, I was never there. So, yeah, she's definitely tried to sabotage and create problems, but testosterone's a great thing. So that drive overtook any sort of loyalty or things like that. Like the way my childhood is, I should be like a full fucking criminal. Like I should just be this pathological sick fuck who wants to beat people up for pleasure, get some perverted fucking pleasure out of it. But because of what I've endured, I don't ever want anyone to feel that. And it's hard because I walk around getting treated that way. Like I'm that guy, but I'm the very fucking opposite. I don't know. I'm just ranting shit now. And it's like, I refuse to follow the narrative. I refuse to let people put me in that box. And it's uh, a constant. I don't do myself any favors, man. I tattooed my body and I'll, you know, I am who I am. But I don't know. I feel tired. And every fucking interaction I have, I'm fucking tired of it. It's like, it will look at me one way. Then I speak. You can see I'm going, clocking it. Like, oh, he's intelligent. I think I'm intelligent. I could be dumb as fuck, I don't know. But, um, and then words come out of my mouth and you can see the brain ticking and they're recalculating, they're recalibrating. And then they walk away confused. Though they don't understand me. They don't get me. And what people don't understand, they become, they want to poke it with a stick. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just tired again. Pipe the sticks, man. Like mm. my fucking teddy bear. I don't get me wrong. Like I, I know how to handle myself, but like idiot. But you carry a uh, you carry a lot of uh, rocks in your rucksack, there, Franklin. You, you gotta. Th these are these are things that that are real that are happening around you, but but you may be you may well be. Um, projecting them outward into situations and um blind spot and 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 sort of almost almost creating the very situation that you yeah <laughs> we, we had a discussion not long ago with uh with uh a neocon about uh walking at, at, at night and, and and projecting yeah yeah i've been following his advice yep. and it's amazing yeah, just focusing on my shopping trip. Yep. 
and ignoring everyone else. Yeah, just get just get out of the other. Get, just get out of the yeah. other shit. Just just you know, it may be happening, it may not be, but who gives a shit either way? That's you exactly right. You are the you are the person you are, and you know it, and you're secure in that. I think, like, I'm normally just kicking on by myself and doing my, doing my thing, and I read, and I'll go see, I've been seeing psychologists and therapists and stuff. Um, a lot of them are, some of them are good people, but they can't, I learned that phrase from deep, hold space. It's too disturbing. I like them. I get to a point where I can say they're uncomfortable. I like, I just, uh, so, yeah, it's, you build up the rapport and then you want to tell them what you've been through and what you've seen, but then they look at you like you're a psychopath, that you're not responding the way a normal functioning person would. Like my tolerance level is like. Yeah, don't don't take too much. I mean, it, every, the, yeah. the psychologists and psychiatrists are, are, you know, just normal human beings as well. And uh, they tend to I go don't into, want to upset them. <laughs> They, they tend to go into that that line of work because they have baggage they want to work out and so they they carry their own shit from their own life into that profession and so it's it can be challenging to find someone who can do the job in a way that works for you and and you shouldn't feel bad shouldn't feel bad walking away from someone who's not a good fit Oh, if, if, if they scare, if if they get scared of you, if you can't be brutally honest, and they and they look scared or judgy or or trigger you in some way, be like, "Thanks, see ya, I'm out of here." Yeah, okay. I, I do that. I, I I've had one good one, really good. Yeah. She was she was fucking awesome. Uh, I mean, in, in the states, I I I generally find a better better luck with with PhDs uh generally but that's not that's not even really necessarily a good yardstick i mean even then you, you know even if they have like a neuroscience background and they're they're completely devoid of you know emotional register and they can they can work through whatever it still doesn't mean they're gonna they're gonna have any skills to to do to help you out through your shit so it's it's hard um Yeah, and the thing is, I'm, I'm guarded, so and I have to be for some, for certain reasons. Um, it's hard for me to speak about what I've been through or what I've seen because people can't, like people can relate, but they can't relate. Uh, my job is very restricting. I'm not important. I don't do anything fancy, but my job is very restricting. Um, so you can't talk about things. So if I deal with sensitive topics or context, I can't then repeat that. One, it's disturbing. Two, it's really disturbing. Three, it's not believable. Four, I sound like I'm making it up. So, or if it gets uh, subpoenaed, or nights goes to uh, court. I've had it before. It all comes out. Everything. It's fucking horrible. So, yeah, shit. I think I've overshared quite a bit there, Deef. <laughs> Feels good, bud. Mm. Just. So can you talk any more about the loneliness? I know there's stuff you can't share, but you hit on that topic. I was curious. I've been alone all my life. Uh, when I interact with people, you like, I mean, you're pretty much getting me now because uh, I don't give a fuck. Essentially, I'm at that point in my life where I don't care. Well, I do care, but I don't. Uh, I'll give you a, um, this is my analogy. Some people see it, 
people I trust to a degree. Um, it's uh, the way I look at it, like I'm on a boat and I want to get in the water. I'll put the prosthetic leg in first and I'll find out amongst the dolphins who's the shark. They'll bite the prosthetic leg. They only get one bite of the cherry. I don't know. It's, um, I see there's a lot of good people in the world. Lots of good people. A lot of good people do shit things for their beliefs and things like that. And then there's genuine horrible people and it's hard to distinguish between them sometimes. So I play a very guarded um, uh, defense in my the real world. Uh, I'm a bit of a comedian. I can roll with it. I can leave a room, pivot, whatever you want to call it, make people laugh. Um, and that's how I've always been. I've always had a diffuse shit at home. De escalate everything. Makes me fucking great at my job, though. <laughs> but, the question uh, the question was, can you tell me more about the loneliness? That was the question. And I haven't heard anything answer yet. Maybe that I was the lonely. answer. You know, like uh, he just said, Val, sorry, but right before you asked your question, he just said that he was afraid that he'd overshared. He was getting over, he was, he sounded overwhelmed to me. And then for you to come in with that very, you know, judging um, time. probing question, uh, it just seemed, it's a little, just struck me as inappropriate, to be honest. And now you're badgering him further. Um, I'm personally very touched with your tenderness, Frankie, and uh, I'm grateful. And you haven't overshared. Um, and you're, I think you're doing great, so. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ellie. But I don't need saving. Mm. You're a beautiful person. I appreciate what you did there. Uh, what do you want to know about loneliness? It's, I'm lonely. What, what, what So I resonate, of... I resonate with the loneliness for myself. And for me, it's super, super hard to get out of my narrative and be with what that lonely part is. And when I saw you share that, I resonated with it and it felt like there was a lot more there. And that's but your tone, your tone came across quite, and that's what I think Ellie's addressing. Um, your tone is different now. Um, I do confrontation for work all the time, so I'm not afraid of it. Um, if you give me more specifics in regards to my situation or emotional, do I have relationships? I can answer it more specifically but if you're asking me in a general term about loneliness yeah i'm lonely i designed it that way because i've been fucked over quite a bit and i see it happening does it make me sad yes but it also gives me freedom positives and negatives with everything in life Has that answered your question, Val? Or I think I was probably using it as a gay, a segue for myself, for um, uh, relating. Of here's another person who is also lonely, and what is their experience of it, and then try mirroring mine. Um, so just, uh, I guess, connect. That was all, there wasn't, um, it was like the reality after we start peeling our story away is this loneliness for me feels like complete shit. And you know, the angry baby and that kind of thing. So I was just 
um, wondering about that because it, it, the word came up and then you went off onto something else. And I see myself do that. I think my issue would have been like I'm, I am telling my story. I'm being vulnerable, which is hard for me. And I could be about the bush, but your tone was quite aggressive. That's how it felt. Whether you well, meant that or not, I don't know. I don't well, know. The tone was part of her explanation right there, where she and I'm described bit, feeling lonely as being shit. I'm now in that space there. of, I'm now in that space of, oh, what the fuck's going on here? And now I'm in that detective mode, the, um, the fear. Yeah, I'm, I'm now watching Val. Like, whoa, where did that come from? And then that's when Ellie jumped in. And Ellie, whoa, thank you. But it's hard to Now I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Because I don't now believe that she's being genuine. And I think she's backtracking <laughs> because she knows the group has seen her calling her on it. And I'm being upfront because I'm not. I deal with confrontation for work. Franklin, so, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear any of that tone. So that, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I mean, I know, I know that Ellie responded and defended you. Um, and maybe you're picking up on Ellie's perception of this no, no, I've, prodding no, no, no. question. If, um, but, uh, but if I, I didn't, didn't believe it, I'd say Ellie, you're wrong, but no, I, I heard that time. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I just thought it was a, well, let's say uh, it's true. Sure. So what? Yeah, I guess maybe I didn't really pay much attention to the tone. I, to be honest, it was like loneliness was is the, the question topic. she was asking. Yeah, the topic that was seemed seemed vi perfectly it's hard viable. to make an invitation to dive into loneliness or grief for isolation. It's, there's going to be different uh, stances towards it. And Val mentioned that loneliness feels like complete shit. So there is judgment in their own description of it or, or something like that right right pal so she could have read yes from her personal experience of loneliness and struggling with it she was resonating with you but she has a bit of, of a shitty relationship with past loneliness so that'll be part of her tone i agree with that but because that's what i heard she was suppressing her own emotions to be able to deliver the, the message. And I, at least what I could feel was a suppression of emotions because loneliness is, is really the hardest emotion that, that you can feel. So, um, yeah, I yeah. understand this. And this is all in the context of family secrets and a lot of, that's a lot of uh, obscurity. So a lot of feeling like anything going too far is dangerous. So it's hard to talk about this. And it's surprising that we didn't get more triggers earlier. Because <laughs> that was your story, Franklin, right? So you shared it with people and they aren't able to hold space for it. That's the norm, right? It feels weird talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm at that point, I'm just like, fuck it, I okay. gotta do something. And... Exactly. What do you got to lose? It's a bunch of avatars on the screen. Doesn't matter. Well, I don't have the tools. And I've looked around and... Tools. This is the only sort of place that really... I don't know. My gut tells me this is the key. Yeah, it turns, it turns out we are, we are the tools, Frank. <laughs> I'm the biggest tool, don't worry, man. I, <laughs> No, and now you're just bragging, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kurt. We all know it's really Kurt. <laughs> oh, 
I like the fact that uh, it was uh, Ellie and the. Um, I was watching the the show. Not the show. This program. I don't know the right word for it. Oh. <laughs> Batteries run low. Uh, and he was coming from the a Syrian background. And it was about males and females, and um, he had seen his best mate been stabbed, and we were talking about the dynamics. And mm. I was really just fucking blown away that Ellie and I forget his name, and I don't want to be disrespectful, be able to talk it out as adults and reach a resolution. It yeah. was just. It was beautiful, right? I know. Thank you for appreciating that. I agree. So like in today's culture, if you disagree with someone, it's like, that's the enemy and it's it was just i haven't really seen that before which is pretty it was i don't know left, left the mark it's like here's what it is Eve's a good moderator as well he he really he really threaded the needle i think on that one where he helped he helped a lot but you know we are coming from we try we i and iman um are clearly coming from good a place of good faith and that that's essential that you have to start there you have to make sure that you're engaging with someone who's also coming from that place that's like step one as far as i can tell and then deep's moderation on top of it and yeah it was resolved within i don't know like 15 minutes or something it's really good <laughs> and the difficult conversations to have because they're they're you're oh talking exactly. ideology <laughs> Here. I'm just so lucky I didn't bag you out. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Here. I'm joking. <laughs> I watched uh, that video as well. For me, it was pretty triggering because um, I don't think Iman is practicing, but uh, I'm a practicing Muslim. And to hear mm -hmm. what Ellie was saying was quite triggering uh, uh, watching that video. I was triggered by both sides. I was on Iman, then I was on Ellie's, and I'm like, and then. <laughs> To be honest with you, at the end of it, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, combination is the right answer, but yeah. So I, I understand what you're saying. Um, as it was triggering because I get what both sides are saying. Hmm. You're on the sweet spot in the middle. It's just different perspectives or different life experiences. But the recent conflict with uh, Valerie's tone, how are you feeling about that now, Frank? Um, um, I don't have any issues with that. I don't know it. Um, mm -hmm. When it landed, uh, my little radar went off and went, oh, there's one. As in not, I'm not saying personality disorder, and I'm just saying that's something you need to watch um and i let it go then ellie jumped in and i went oh fuck it i better say something otherwise the elephant's in the room um and i'll make my judgment on val about if i'm not saying it right i am sorry that i'm not saying it right val i'll make my judgment on her further on down the line when i get to know her better and how she interacts with others because i don't know it and it could be a genuine, you know, thing. And it, it could have been me misinterpreting it. I can accept that. But I did. At the time, that's how I felt. It's communication. I don't know. Not angry about it. I was, I would say. But I'm not. It's. I'm kind of here to be challenged, to be honest. Hmm. Nothing more exciting. I have ADHD, you know, I haven't took any meds, so if I talk a lot of shit, you can understand why. And I really need to go, Beef. You need to go. Are you asking for permission? Sorry, because you can't I feel leave. like you can't go. <laughs> no. <laughs> The iPad's gonna die. That's um, there's an excuse. Um, 
I need to take my medication. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just start going in tangents and trust me, it's it's not it's interesting, <laughs> but I take uh, my Dexies for a reason. So I love you, dude. You don't give nothing away, man. <laughs> I'm never playing poker with you, D. <laughs> oh. Thanks. I'll see you next week. I can't hide my poker face or my poker moves. But... Thanks for joining us. Cheers,